Good morning, everyone. Uh, well done on this side. Good morning, everyone else. Good morning. Good morning. And a, a very warm welcome to St. Luke's today. And we know that one song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, Summer and Winter. And we sure are in summer, aren't we? But we're nice in our hall with the lovely floor. We're here with fellow believers, and it's a beautiful day. So, um, we like to stand in as we start the service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His name, now and forever. Open our lips, Lord. And we shall praise your name. i 
Please sit as we pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Spend a moment reflecting on what that means. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together for collect. God of love, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of our love, and by it empower us to care for our sisters and brothers. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. As we come to the reading of God's word, let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are the Word. That before the beginning, at the beginning, you were there. That your Word spoke all things into being. We pray now, Lord, as we listen to your Word, we may be aware that creating, continue, continuing to create in our lives, in our families, and in our community. Amen. We're invited to stand for the reading of God's word, and this we won't have to be said. A reading from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 to 28. Now, there have been many of those priests since they prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, 
He is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always hears to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly is our name, one who is holy, blameless, <coughs> pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priest, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priest men in all the weakness, but the oath which came after the law, appointed son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 146, and we say it antiphonally. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is, is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God has sign for all generations. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Listen to the good news proclaimed in Mark, Chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. Glory to Christ our Saviour. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one answered Jesus, is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You're not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of Christ. 
Would you bow your heads as you stand? Well, God, as we reflect on your word in the midst of our world, living our lives in you, we pray that you would speak and we would hear. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please sit down. <coughs> it appears that we are in the midst of a an election cycle and even though we are not directly involved in elections there's a whole lot of news about elections from around the world they've just had an election for the leader of the conservative party in the UK and Kemi Badenoch was elected um, a black woman and I'd always thought that uh, it would be the Labour Party that would have a black leader. And instead we have her leading the Conservative Party. We're also preparing for the election in America, which no matter what the result is, will lead to a fair amount of chaos. Um, and it's, a, it's an election which, as I've been watching it from the sidelines, it seems to be splitting the country. Um, I don't think America has been this divided since the 1800s at the end of the Civil War. If you look back at politics from sort of 30, 40 years ago, there was a vast middle ground that Americans held, and they had their... Um, peripheral issues that distinguish the parties. Today those peripheral issues are the main issues and the only issues and there is no middle ground. And so um, it is incredibly divided. And as the debates have happened and speeches have been made, we found that the, the trend of society where we don't want to confuse facts and truth has played out large. Facts have very little weight in the election. It is the truth that the person speaks and what they believe, even what, they, what is true for them, that they pronounce. And what that does is undergirds a society and a culture where you have little that you can rely on. Because if I believe something is true and you believe something different is true, we both believe we're right and the facts are ignored. And as I've looked at the politicians uh, and what they've been saying and what they've been doing, I thought, as Christians in America, how would you vote? What do you look for in a political leader? And I believe the New Testament is rich in what one looks for in good leaders. And you have Paul writing to Timothy and saying, I want you to appoint leaders in the church. Now, there are a couple of things which are specifically for church. But what he does is he underlines what a good leader would look like. He says, the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. The problem when you're electing leaders on what they promise rather than on their character, is that promises change, character doesn't. <coughs> and as that looks a little bit messy, we've had another election last week, quite different. There's an, an election in Botswana. And the Botswana Democratic Party, which has ruled the, the country since independence, 
lost the election. And Mokweti Masisi, the leader of the party, graciously accepted the result, stepped down and said he looked forward to serving as the loyal opposition and he would do what he could to support the winners, the umbrella for dem democratic change and Dumu Boko, their leader. And I thought it is an interesting situation where Africa can teach America about elections and how to manage them. It seems like some in America have learned from all the wrong examples of this continent. And in a sense, we look at this from the outside and it's easy to think, well, how, it doesn't really matter to us. We're really on the periphery. And thankfully we are, down on the southern tip of Africa, we're not in the midst of it, but it is going to affect us. The fact that Botswana has had a, a, a stable change of government counts because we know what happens when a neighbor becomes unstable. <clears throat> We've seen the fruits of a disastrous Zimbabwe. And so if Botswana can maintain um, the economy, maintain the country, it, it does matter to us. The United States <coughs> affects world trade and therefore the outcome of the election is going to impact on us as well. And we see society and the world in a bit of tension and turmoil. Going back in history, we had the Great War in 1914, which was supposedly the war to end all wars. And then 15 odd years later, Europe had another one. And when that was finally over, we ended with the Cold War, which seemed to go on for a long time, but there was a, a stable stalemate. And society was fairly uh, well managed. In the 1980s, we saw the undoing of communism. The Berlin Wall fell, the United, uh, uh, the Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics uh, disbanded and the individual republics emerged, and the economy grew. World trade flourished, and under Deng Xiaoping in China from the late 1980s, that country was able to lift about 700 million people out of poverty. Those were the good times. That is no longer the case. We now have a war in the Ukraine with Russia drawing on North Korean aid, supporting Iran and Syria in conflict in the Middle East. And that does affect us because the price of bread has gone up. Our, so our supermarket shelves are affected by the, the war in the Ukraine. Israel is in a disastrous situation and it seems like the war there is um, unending and will not lead to a peaceful outcome. There will be conflict and tension and problems for the next generation. The United States has picked a trade war with China and certain politicians are threatening to put tariffs on every single item from China which will disrupt world trade, which will make many Americans poorer. It will protect some people's jobs, not everyone's. But what it also does is it undermines the financial <coughs> influence in the world. And so when there are problems, you can't bring financial pressure to bear on situations. What do you do about, uh, about North Korea? You already put so many financial um, restrictions and uh, pressures on the country, you've got nothing more other than conflict. And if you alienate China, you've lost an ally in that situation. North <coughs> Korea is supposedly sending troops to Russia and probably arming Iran. How will the world be controlled? 
what will happen to restore peace? How do we resolve these complex <coughs> issues? Where do we find hope in a situation which looks to be largely hopeless otherwise? The psalm we read this morning says it so well. The psalmist says, do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. And their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that day, their plans come to nothing. The politicians come with their, their grand schemes. They highlight the problems and proclaim their answers and they claim that they will fix it and if they get into power they will change the situation they will deliver and unfortunately history shows that delivery is usually a lot less than the, what the promises were and as a nation we have seen that so clearly one thinks of the the great optimism that there was in the 1990s and what the country could be and how we would manage and what would go on and we've seen how corruption eroded that and we drive on roads daily which bear testimony to the impact of corrupt politicians and corrupt officials. We had the Zondo Commission which highlighted the extent of corruption and not much has come of that. And if we're relying on princes, if we're relying on politicians, if we're relying on people, it is not going to work. Instead the psalmist says, blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord their God. We have a God who can help us. We have a God who can be the source of our hope. And it carries on to talk of who this God is. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. And he remains faithful forever. This is our God. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free and gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down and loves the righteous. He watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow by frustrates the ways of the wicked. And as you read that, you think, that sounds so much like Jesus as he stood in the synagogue and said, uh, read from Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bring sight, to bring healing, to bring wholeness. This is our God. This is the source of our hope. A God who can make a difference. In the letter to the Hebrews, the writer speaks of, of what they learned from the Old Testament and what God was doing in the Old Testament and how the tabernacle was set up and the offerings were there to, to highlight the need for God and to, to highlight the fact that we needed a way to his presence. But as he says, the blood of sheep and goats can only be symbolic. They cannot actually cleanse us as we need cleansing. And then in chapter 9, verse 11, he says, but when Christ came as high priest, things changed. Because he went with his own blood as an offering, not into an earthly tabernacle, which was a, a reflection of the heavenly one. He went into the heavenly tabernacle itself. And there he offered the offering. And through the eternal spirit, he offered himself unblemished to God to cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death. He came that we can be different. And he says he came so that we may serve the living God. And Jesus highlights what that living God serving him would look like. He says the commands are simple. Love God with everything you have and love your neighbor. Everything else hinges on that. And he comes and calls us to that love. Not trusting in ourselves, 
not trying to man uh, manage it ourselves, not thinking that uh, our religious observance or, or our ability will deliver us. Because then we're trusting in our humanity, we're trusting in human beings who are weak and failing. It's not just the politicians who fail, we all fail. None of us will get it right. And we put our trust in Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who has offered himself the perfect sacrifice once for all, who has restored us and brought us to redemption. And so we can step into the world with love that we receive from him. Scripture says we love because he first loved us. And so as we live in this world with its complexities and its failings, with its tensions and its hopelessness, our, our eyes aren't on the problem, our eyes are on the cross. Uh, we don't look around us and think, what can, how can this work? We look on, uh, to our God and we say, we recognize in history over thousands of years, you have worked, you have brought your plans about, you have um, solved the situations. Not always in the way that people would have liked. <coughs> God's plans and God's uh, purposes are perfect and they will be fulfilled. And so we step into the world and we say, God, use us. Lord, give us your love. We, we live in a world where there is so much tension and hopelessness. Lord, let us go out to signs of hope. Let us go out loving our neighbor. Let us go out loving our enemy. Let us go out praying for our enemy and those who persecute us. And let us go out reflecting Jesus into a world that desperately needs the hope that he brings. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you stepped into the world, left your glory behind, humbled yourself, and in your perfection, offered yourself for us. Lord, in our restored relationship with you, we offer ourselves and pray, Lord, Work in us. Work through us. Let your light shine. Amen. Amen. church being built by the saints on the foundation of your son will be so faithful to his teaching that we will reflect his glory around the world. We pray for Christians in countries where their faith makes them vulnerable to harm and danger. Strengthen and sustain all who are persecuted and tortured for their faith. We pray that they will be aware of your presence with them. We thank you, Holy Father, for your leadership in Archbishop Tavo and Bishop Steve. Strengthen them in their daily challenges as they guide our diocese according to your will. Bless them and their families. We give thanks also for St. Luke's Church, our Rector Ian, our clergy, Jeanette, Sorry, Jerry, Jeanette, 
Claudia and Isabella, and all that so ably contribute to the smooth running of St. Luke's. Creator God, our Bible tells us that nations will rise up against <coughs> nations, and that there will be famines and earthquakes. We pray for all those suffering the ravages of war, terrorism, natural and man-made disasters. In particular today, we pray for the victims and families caught up in the torrential flooding in Spain. May they be governed by men and women of integrity who are prepared to serve their people with honesty and justice, working for peace and reconciliation and guided by your spirit as they lead those they represent. At this time when exams are in progress, we pray for all that are part of that process, and in particular those writing the matriculation examination, and university and college students sitting for their finals. May they have the confidence and endurance to achieve their best results. Merciful God, we pray for the many people who know, who we know are suffering, whether in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for all who are waiting for treatment or recovering from it. Thank you for the medical staff who provide that care and healing. We ask for your peace and comfort for all who are suffering. Gracious God, this morning we have learned that we should love the Lord, our God, with all our heart and with all our soul, with all our mind and with all our strength. And furthermore, to love our neighbours as ourselves. In the light of your love, death has lost its sting. We pray for the families and friends of anyone we know who has died recently or have an anniversary at this time. Merciful God, give us ears to hear and minds to understand the message of eternal life that we may look forward with patience and confidence to that time when we will join you in the peace of eternity. Lord, as we go from here today, we give thanks for the love you have shown to the world through all your saints. May we, week by week, follow their example and continue to celebrate our communion with them whenever and wherever we worship. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Let us stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he sees and has seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered to death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from
from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and His Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. A notice regarding the collection. The collection bags will go round once we have, well, just at the end of the piece. Um, so two notices about that, really. First of all, there is a little QR code on those little bags, and you can use SnapScan if, like me, you don't have any cash. But the other notice about the collection is to say that the collection goes to the Rose of Sharon Ministries. There is information on that in your bulletin. Uh, in summary, though, their ministry has been both to plant churches to train up pastors such that their ministry then becomes independent as well, and also to provide for congregations that are not able to sustain themselves in the form of the likes of Sunday school material. And so we remember that Christ is our people. And in Christ we are one. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
so we offer up all of the gifts that we are first given by God, and that we bring in any form, both in terms of the collection and also in terms of time and talents, and gifts offered elsewhere in our lives. Source of all life, the heaven and earth are yours, yet you have given us dominion over all things. Receive the fruits of our labor offered in love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed and suffered with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the grave of God. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. <coughs> we say that special prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
the bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. <coughs> we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. As you come up to receive communion, a reminder that by default the lay minister will give you wine, and if you would prefer juice, please would you indicate so. Then also, if you have not been admitted to receive Holy Communion, if you would let us know that simply by folding your arms across your chest, and we will give you a blessing. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanks.
and have glimpsed your glory. Filled with your spirit and trusting in your holy word, as a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us with our lives lived as an offering of worship in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We respond. Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work take a moment to lift up prayers for our continent and indeed for the world. <coughs> God bless Africa. God bless Guide our leaders and give us peace. Jesus Christ said, Amen. I think maybe let me just start by saying we had a wonderful holiday. We were away for just over 10 days. I went to Botswana and there's very little evidence of an election. There are a couple of posters and most of them were just telling people how to vote and where to vote and the identification they needed. Um, we were camping, which was wonderful, but it was hot. It was 44 degrees, so <laughs> we won't go in October again. We'll make another plan. But anyway, we had a wonderful time, and it was good to be back and to come back, finding that everything is still going well, things are ticking over, running smoothly. It was a great blessing to be part of a community that uh, has the number of leaders and committed people that we have here. Does anybody here have a birthday today? 
Does anybody here have a birthday this week? Penny has a birthday this week. Anyone else? And Charles has a birthday this week. We're going to have to sing happy... Oh, and Leona has a birthday this week. We're going to have to sing happy birthday to everyone. church ceremony and then in a couple of months time they're going to have another ceremony um, to round it all off. But we're going to be celebrating with them next Sunday. So over tea, Sari and Maria will be here and we will have a celebration tea with them in the process of their marriage. Um, to eat um, and we will celebrate with Sally and Maria. Then we have a quiet morning on the 30th of November which is in about three weeks time leading into Advent planning for the year ahead. You can put that into your uh, diary so long. If you are going to join us please get, um, let us know so that we can print enough handouts and things like that. Our carol service will be on Sunday the 15th of December at 7 o'clock in the evening. We will do it in the garden on the, uh, on the lawn, um, so pray that it doesn't rain. <laughs> Otherwise we will do it in here, but it will be on the 15th of December. And then finally, tea today will be up at the Crawford Centre, so when you go out of the hall and there's no tea, don't just leave and go home. Wander up to the Crawford Centre and join us for tea over there. Thank you. Also just noticed to say that if you are in need of prayer or know someone who is in need of prayer and wish to stand in that space, there will be a prayer team on the third side of the hall, which is called the Southern Room, just at the end of the service. So please feel invited to join them. Won't you stand for God's blessing? <clears throat> the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Shall we put this next song? Can you just bring up the words for verse 2? Again. <coughs> it brings up chaos. So Ian spoke about chaos, and if we look around, there is chaos. But as people of God, we have light. And if we want to sum up Ian's sermon today is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with your soul, with your mind. Right? We know that one, right? And then we need to do our bit. We need to be salt and light out there. Some people are hurting. Some people are in trouble. We need to be in the hands and feet of our Lord. So think about that this week. So this is amazing grace. Oh, 
Peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.